Hey everybody, welcome back to another video in my Creating a Great Tone series. Today is going to kind of be a response to a bunch of comments about a video I did recently. And that video was about the difference between running effects in series or parallel. And in that video, I debunked a myth that's going around. And I'm not sure why it's going around, but I was getting tons of questions about why I never pull my reverb, let's say, for instance, down into a split path and run it parallel instead of in series. And my answer always was, why would I? I mean, there's, there's no purpose for it. I can just use the mix control to control it. And so many people would tell me, no, 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 it's a big difference. As soon as you pull it down there, you know, you get this cleaner dry signal and you get the, it's just a better sound, the reverb sounds better and so on and so forth. And that's false. And I, I, I like to say I proved it in the first video, but I did make a mistake. I should have been even more scientific in the first video to avoid all the comments and arguments after the fact. And that's what I'm gonna to do today to refute this once and for all so nobody can even argue because it's going to be scientifically proven that there's no difference. Um, so I've had some comments, people telling me how I was wrong about how the mix control works. Uh, I had one today that I deleted because it was so full of misinformation. I just didn't have the time to comment. And then it got condescending at the end where he's like, there, there, so I hope that helps now. And I just kind of thought, I just, I'm deleting this. I don't want more misinformation going around. And that's the problem when people leave comments that are full of misinformation, then others come along and maybe think that those are accurate, right? So today I'm going to refute this. Now, you know, I'm not saying that there's never a time where you want to run effects in parallel versus series. I mean, there are definite times where you want to do that, but for the simple purpose of saying that a reverb sounds better or you're going to hear your dry signal more by splitting it that way is just wrong. So let's go over to HX Edit and Cubase Action. I'm going to show you what my setup is like here, okay? And I use this same setup for a few of my videos on gain staging, and unity gain and to prove some other myths that were going around with the helix and you can't argue with the null test so again what a null test is is it shows whether two different audio files are identical or sometimes even similar enough that we will not be able to perceive any difference between them okay and it's a very good test it's a very brutal test though because it actually shows the truth of what's going on a lot of folks make the, the mistake of comparing two different sounds. Let's say a reverb in parallel versus series by just listening by ear and then making a conclusion. The problem is these are usually done in a very incorrect manner. Usually one signal is much louder than the other and it doesn't even have to be much louder. If it's just a little bit louder, they're going to convince themselves that one is better. So we have to go about this in a scientific approach. So what I have here is I have Cubase set up right here and it's got just a dry guitar signal uh, recorded off USB 7 out of the Helix. So this is just like plugging my guitar in, okay? And that's gonna sound like this. And I just have that looping. Now what you're actually hearing that process through is this little preset I put together over here on the Helix. Now what I have, just to, to um, reiterate again so people understand what's happening, I explained this in a previous video, but uh, out of Cubase, that little file is feeding USB 3.4, which I have inputted here onto separate paths. So this path is being fed with the exact same performance signal, everything as this path. I then output this path on USB 1.2 and this path on USB 3.4. So the USB 1.2 path is guitar one down here in my mixer. Uh, guitar two would be USB 3.4. So I can compare these two files, flip the phase on one of them, and then if they null, they're identical. So let's try that. What I've done is I've put a clean uh, jazz chorus model on both paths, okay? And just to show you, so nobody accuses me of anything, I'm gonna take this, I am going to copy, and I am going to paste the identical model, same settings and everything. Now, if I play this, what you will hear, these are both enabled to be heard, right? So if I play this, right now you're hearing it fed through both these. If I mute one, signal level drops, if I mute the other, it disappears. Okay, so we understand what's going on. Now, if these two paths are identical in sound, when I flip the phase on one of these, the sound will disappear and null. Let's try it. And you see my meters just sink down to nothing here. It takes them a, a second or two to fade away. But here we are, we're nulled down to, you know, once the meters finally fade down, we're nulled down to somewhere in the vicinity of minus 140 
dB. It's completely inaudible. These are identical, okay? Sometimes there's little timing discrepancies the way the Helix processes the block, even though they're the same block, they sound identical, but you sometimes will get some little artifacts way below anything audible. If I take my, my uh, monitor controller, crank it full, I hear a whole bunch of noise from my studio monitors, and I don't hear anything from that. So these have nulled perfectly and beautifully. If I flip the phase back, they come back, okay? So that proves that these two paths are identical. Okay, so let's do this. Let's add a reverb, and I'm gonna go to a hull reverb, and I'm gonna set it so there's a fair amount of reverb decay, and I'll copy that, and I will paste it down here. Okay, so now we have the identical settings on both. Now again, if I play this, we're gonna now hear reverb in there, but if I flip the phase, it still shows that they're identical. So let's do it. I flip the phase and the sound disappears. And you see the meters again, go all the way down to where they were before, right? Down way below even perceptible hearing, right? I could crank my monitor up again, no sound. So those are identical. So these reverbs sound the same. All right, so the argument is, if I run one through the serial path and one pulled down like so, where I set this to, let's say, a split AB, where we can blend them, or using the merge block over here to blend them, then things should now sound different. Well, let's see if they do. Uh-oh. The null test didn't work anymore. Well, of course not. It's not supposed to. All we've done is by pulling this down is we've changed the balance between wet and dry. And that's very audible. I think if we listen to the one on the serial path versus the one on the serial path, there's much more reverb. And the reason is, is because we have the mix control of 32% up here the mix control 32% is now blending with the direct signal, so that's like this mix control being even lower. So, when we work on a split path like this, or a parallel path, we almost always come down here and crank this up to 100%. So if I raise this to 100%, we're gonna see that they're not going to know. Now some people might say, see, there's a difference. And I go, well, watch this now. All we have to do is use our mix control up here to balance the two so they're in the same balance of direct and wet signal. And watch what happens as I come up here and raise the wet signal. Watch our meters and listen. You will hear the sound disappear once I reach 50% on my mix. gone. Now, some people might say, yeah, but it's not nulling as much. Now we're only down minus 100. And that's accurate. Now, the difference being that the resolution of the mixer, if I could go, listen to the difference by 1%. I go to 50 and I get RMS of around 100. If I go to 51, the RMS value jumps into like minus 56 or so. So a 1% move on the mix makes that much of a difference in the null test. So the problem we're hearing here, while it's still a perfect null, it's that we can't get here to let's say maybe 50.1 or 50.2%, which would make it null perfectly. So again, at the 50% level, there is no sound. Okay, it is, and any sound that is remaining is just because of a volume discrepancy. And that can actually be proven by going here and taking one of them, watch here where I have the resolution to go into hundreds. And if I drop this to 2.99, now look at my null, it drops to 114. If I go 2.98, uh, it goes back up, so 2.99, whoops, not there, 2.99 is the magic number and all it is is a volume discrepancy. It's not a difference in the reverb, and this 
proves it, okay? And if I could go 2.999 maybe, it would get even better on the null test. But anyways, a number of minus 113 is considered a null, a perfect null because you can't hear any difference. There's no difference between those two sounds. Another way we could prove this is by trying a couple of other different things as well. What happens if I come down here and I totally take out the A path? Okay, so now all we're getting is 100% reverb down here. So I should be able to match that by simply coming up here and going 100% reverb. And sure enough, the sound disappears yet again. What about the alternative to that? If I come and I go this up to zero and I pull the reverb right out, that would be the same as coming down here to 0% on my mix. The sound disappears. There's no difference, okay? Uh, and again, like I said, any tiny little remainder here is more a difference of some volume mismatch that we can't get down to the 0 .001 of a dB, let's say. So there is no audible sound anymore. So again, if we come back down to this one, we go 100%. Uh, let's say, come over here to 50%. Balance these back off. We get our null back, so there's no difference. Okay, it's perfectly nulled out here, or as close to perfect as we can get. Um, and what happens if we just bring this down a little bit, like a lot of people like to work? Well, I should still be able to come up here and very quickly with my mix control, get that to null out again to the best as I can with the resolution of the numbers I'm using. So that again nulls it out. So it doesn't matter what I do here, if I pull this back a bit more, I can still just get it to null out with my mix control. There's no difference. This doesn't make the dry signal pop anymore or not pop. It doesn't have any different effect than just using our mix control, okay? And if we go and listen to these, We truly hear how this, there is no difference in sound. One's not popping more or not, the other less, whatever, okay? So it doesn't matter how we set this up, there is a way to get basically the exact same setting with the mix control. There's no magic to the split path. Now what about if we were to reset these back as normal and use our split control here, right? So if I was to split this off where it's just going bypassing the reverb, and we'll play that, that would be the same as having no reverb on up here. If I was to swing this over to all reverb, that would be the same as having all reverb on my mix control. If I was to go 50%, I should be able to bring this somewhere close to the middle. And again, have it disappear. If I go a little bit this way, I can still simply get it to cancel out with my mix control. Does that clear it up for you? Now, this doesn't mean that there's never a time for a split path. And somebody brought up a good comment. They said, well, I have a whole bunch of effects down there that I have blended in just a beautiful way. And I like to just blend them in with my dry signal. 100% I agree. That is a wonderful way to work. And that's kind of almost like a wet, dry uh, mix, wet, dry, wet. You know, we've balanced uh, delays, reverbs, chorus, all sorts of things into a beautiful sound that we just want to blend in. We could probably still accomplish that with the mix controls on a series path, but it might be just a, not as good a workflow. So if it's for workflow reasons, by all means, but there isn't some magic to, oh, it makes the clean sound pop or the direct sound pop more. It just does not. And this is proving it in that we can null these out. Now, I also had somebody say to me, what about if we're using a much more complex big reverb? You know, something like maybe a glitz reverb. Let's take the glitz and we'll, we'll copy that and paste it here. Now, the problem with some of these complex uh, effects with modulation, they won't null properly even when it's identical. So these are identical right now, right? So if I play this with my phase off,
we still have very audible artifacts. And the reason is, it's not that they sound different. It's that one, and, and let's take a listen to how they sound, actually. As we would expect, they sound identical, okay? But they still don't know. The reason being, a lot of times, when they have some sort of modulation in with them, what's happening is the modulation is happening out of sync. So while they sound identical, they can't know. One thing we can do to get rid of that is start taking out the modulation effect. So if I start with the mod mix and the crossover. What happens? The null goes way down. If I take the depth and the rate down on both, now look what we have. We have a null that goes way down, okay? So again, if I was to pull this down, even though it's you know a bigger, more complex reverb, so if I set this at 100, and while coming back and setting my, my split uh, AB path back to even, when I move this up to 50, guess what? Same as every other reverb, it nulls out, right? Now I might have to adjust this a little bit to get it to null even deeper. As, as you see, I don't know, 2.99 maybe, whatever it is. It's a, there you go. This nulls down to minus 126. You know, so this proves, without a shadow of a doubt, everybody, simply taking a reverb, moving it down to a parallel path, does nothing, okay? It doesn't make the direct signal pop more. It does if, if we have different settings, for sure. But when we compare apples to apples in a scientific manner, it does not make the reverb sound better. It doesn't really do anything for us that we can't accomplish with the simple mix control. It's that simple, it's been proven now. So, anybody who wants to comment on this and tell me that that's not the way the mix control works, yes it is, I just proved it. That's not the, you know, the. it, it sounds totally different and that's why I do it. That just means you haven't done the experiment right. You haven't attempted a proper scientific approach to it, okay? You need to try something like this where everything is balanced volume-wise as much as possible. You got to see here, even something as much as a 1 100th of a dB change in a fader affects the nulling huge. So if something's not nulling, it doesn't mean the sounds aren't identical, it means that the volume is probably not matched. In this case, that's exactly what it is. And we don't have the ability to match it because maybe it's to the thousandth or the 10,000th degree where we would have to match it to get the perfect null. But it doesn't matter anyways because when we're getting an RMS max uh, of, of minus 125 or 130 or even 100 or 105, 110, that's good enough. That will tell you that those are the same sound, okay? so. I really hope that kind of put to bed some of, the, some of the nonsense that's floating around in all the comments I got from the first video. This is now scientifically proven that those reverbs don't sound any different if we pull them down. And like I said, if you have a whole bunch of effects that you've balanced beautifully between them and want to blend that with your dry signal, by all means. This is the same as working in a DAW with insert versus send, right? Uh, there's advantages to, to using one sometimes. You know, in a DAW, if we want to send all of our different drum microphones to the same reverb, well, we're not going to put an instance of reverb on every single one and balance the mix. We're going to get one send set up, possibly with a reverb at 100% mix, and then put in as much of each microphone sending out to that reverb so that we don't have to have so many instances and just a headache to deal with right? Um, and possibly different settings on the reverbs and whatnot. So that would be an example of why we would in a DAW maybe. But in, in the Helix, there are reasons we would use the split path and the parallel path in that manner, but not to make anything sound better. It's nothing we can't accomplish by simply using the mix control. I hope that was clear, guys, and I hated to even have to do this, but I've just been seeing so much misinformation coming up in questions through emails to me, Facebook Messenger, uh, YouTube comments, and it gets a little bit tiring having to sit there. I, I don't have the time to sit there and, and, and answer everybody that's telling me why I was so wrong in the first video, but this should lay that to rest and prove that there is no advantage to pulling an effect down into a split path unless we have good reason to. It doesn't change the sound. It's nothing we can't accomplish without just simply using the mix control. All right? 
Thank you guys for tuning in so, so much. I appreciate you guys watching. Please like the video and share it with anybody who you really think could get used out of it because I think it's an important topic just so that we understand what we're actually doing on the Helix and not just doing things because we're fooled into thinking that it's the best way to work. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification, get notified when I put new content out and I will be back soon with some more content. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in and ciao for now.